It's that time of the year again. You're probably feeling that pre-university anxiety kicking in and all the am I going to make it through these thoughts are swirling in your head. Maybe you are worried about balancing all your uni work with social activities and actually having a life, making new friends in a potentially new city, and let's be honest, whether you will survive on those instant noodles for the next few years. Well, the good news is that we've all been there. That mix of excitement and sheer panic is totally normal because here's the thing, university isn't just about surviving, it's about thriving, as cheesy as it may sound. And obviously, while none of us was born knowing how to actually be an adult, I think I've picked up a few tips and tricks along the way that I wish someone would have told me before I stepped foot onto campus. Spoiler, you do not need to have everything figured out from the start. For those of you that do not know me, my name is Joanna and I have just graduated with a maths degree from the University of Oxford and I'm doing all my best to share my experience from university with all of you so you don't make the same mistakes that I did along the way. So let's turn that anxiety into excitement because university is going to be one wild but amazing ride. Okay, so the main reason why we are at uni is to study, I suppose, so let's get right into it. A smart move is to do a bit of prep before you step foot onto campus. So you take some time over the summer before university to figure out what study tools actually work for you. So are you gonna use an iPad to take notes? Are you gonna go old school with some pen and paper? Are you a flashcards fanatic or an online quiz master, a color code everything person? Knowing your style ahead of time can save you so much stress later on. Moreover, do a bit of research online into any software that could ease your overall workflow. For example, you will 100% need to deal with PDFs while at uni, so it's essential to know what an innovative PDF editor can do these days. Here's where UPDF comes into play, whom I would really, really like to thank for partnering up with me for this video. UPDF editor is an all-in-one PDF solution that works on Mac OS, iOS, iPad OS, PC, and Android. Whether you're reading, annotating, editing, or even translating PDFs, UPDF has you covered. What sets it apart is its powerful AI features. Imagine this. So you've got a 50-page document to summarize for a class and you're very short on time. UPDF's AI can generate accurate summaries in just seconds. And if you're dealing with texts in multiple languages, it can translate over 38 languages with incredible precision. From Korean to French, UPDF handles it all very seamlessly. But that's not even all. UPDF AI also provides in-depth explanation of any text you select, making it perfect for breaking down tough concepts, whether you're a student or a professional. Plus, you can even upload your documents to the cloud, ask related questions, and get the main idea instantly. It's like having a personal tutor all in your pocket. And the best part, you can access UPDF AI online from any device without even installing the app. Whether you need to translate road signs, explain diagrams, or even get help with complex academic problems, UPDF AI online has got you covered. Just upload an image like a photo of a math problem or just a chart and let UPDF do all the rest for you. It's truly a lifesaver. Of course, UPDF isn't just about AI. It's packed with features like PDF annotation where you can highlight, underline and add sticky notes, editing text and images, converting files, and even comparing two PDFs side by side. Plus, the new Compare Files feature is super handy for reviewing revisions or different versions of the same document. Now, here's the best part for students. UPDF offers an exclusive discount for you guys. Check out their education page at the link down below to grab UPDF Pro at a very special price. And trust me, it is all worth it. It does make your study sessions a lot smarter, not harder, which is what we all want, right? All right, now that we have our trusty PDF editor, then maybe some software specialized for your subject would be useful. In my case, for maths, I have used Wolfram Alpha for calculus, GeoGebra and Desmos for geometry visualization, and for overall productivity and time management, I found Flora and Notion to be amazing. Now, perhaps the most important thing once you start uni, do not panic. 
I know it's way easier said than done, right? But seriously, you do not need to be a genius, you simply need a bit of a switch in your overall mentality. University is indeed a lot different than high school and because of this, the imposter syndrome can quickly sink into your brain. You might start feeling that the material is too difficult, is maybe too hard to process, and that surely you do not belong there, that you are not smart enough to study your own degree. That is completely false. That experienced admissions committee knew what they were doing when they selected you. You apply for this subject because you enjoy it, so always remind yourself that. It will instantly become easier. It's important to remember that everything can be figured out. So take a deep breath, step away from your notes, maybe even go outside for some fresh air and come back. Read or watch the material again and know that you are smart enough to figure it all out. Definitely one of the most overlooked things in university is the realization that you are not going through it alone. So simply ask for help. Knowing when and how to ask for help will get you really far. Trust me, it's not a sign of weakness, not at all, it's just plain smart. Ask your colleagues to work on a problem sheet together, organize weekly study sessions in a coffee shop maybe, send your tutor that email asking about that one question you'll be spending hours and anger on. For example, in exam season, me and my boyfriend would spend two hours every day for a week going over one of our common courses at a coffee shop and that actually ended up being my highest scoring exam. Of course, don't just copy someone else's study plan or methods just because it worked for them. You need to do you. Everyone's brain is wired in a different way, so don't panic if someone's fancy flashcards do not work for you. It doesn't actually matter, you just need to figure out your own style. Trying to squeeze into someone else's routine is like trying to wear, you know, shoes two sizes too small. It's uncomfortable and honestly just simply not worth it. Now, let's talk about your home away from home, your dorm room. First rule, do not buy anything until you've actually got a full scoop on what your room is really like. So trust me, you do not want to end up with bed sheets that don't fit your bed or a rug that covers zero floor space. So unless you know in advance what your new room is going to look like and what the dimensions of everything are, don't spend your money. You'll have plenty of time once you move in to go into your local shop to get everything that you need. But here's something that's actually worth investing time and effort in, and that's making your room your own. This is going to be your sanctuary, your escape from all the chaos of university life. So whether that's fairy lights, or the giant plushie that you secretly love, or just some posters, go ahead and make it very, very cozy. You will be spending a large amount of time in your room, you're gonna have your friends over from time to time, so make it a space that you find very comforting to be in. And speaking of comfort, let's quickly talk about meals. Sure, you might be tempted to leave off those instant noodles and pizza, but your brain and your body will thank you if you pay a bit more attention to what you're eating. Believe me, surviving on just coffee and crisps isn't really a long-term plan, as much as my first year self would hate that. So try out the dining hall on campus, they always have decent cooked meals, invest some time in learning how to cook a thing or two, you don't really need to be a chef, you just need to know your basics. Cooking can also be a social activity, you can invite some people over and the fun will already be there. It's important that you are well nourished to be able to succeed academically, so make sure you treat this as the priority that it should be. Alright, so this is very funny. In first year, I was under the impression that summers are just for fun and for vacation. Yeah, I did not know at all that people do summer internships to gain that work experience that's so valuable these days. Shocker, right? And I did not know at all how much work there is to get just one single internship. So listen carefully, spend some time, even in first year, to get your CV up to date, always make sure it's updated, and get your LinkedIn in order. This will save you tons of time later down the way and it will open up a ton of possibilities. Opportunities can pop up out of literally nowhere and being prepared makes the difference between landing the dream internship or just watching it slip away. Ask people in the year 
years above if they did any internships, how they found the job postings and look up opportunities online because there, there are tons of resources these days. There is a very decent probability that your university already has a career service and careers website. So don't hesitate to email them, ask for some guidance and allow them to send you newsletters. That's literally how I found both of my summer internships that led to me getting a really good graduate role. Needless to say, don't stress too much over it. Start small, look for internships or just part-time work very early on and you'll build up that very important CV. Extracurriculars, these are the secret sauce to a well-rounded university experience. So my advice, go to as many taster sessions for various societies as you can in the first few weeks. You will meet people sharing the same interests and even passions as you do. And these people will very, very likely become some of your best friends and maybe you'll discover a new passion of yours, whether it's rowing, drama, or I don't know, competitive cheese tasting or something. I very much regret not doing this enough. I would have loved to do basketball, weightlifting, and maybe even give acting a try. So definitely don't shy away from these things. Now's the time to get out of your comfort zone. You're young and you're definitely not supposed to study 24 seven. You need some time for yourself and for your personal development. Moreover, and I can simply not emphasize this enough, get your movement in. After hours of staring at a textbook or just your computer screen, your soul will need a break. So whether that's hitting the gym or playing a sport or even just taking some long walks, make sure you're doing something for you, for yourself, besides just grinding through your degree. I would definitely not have been able to get through Oxford without plenty of gym sessions, tennis matches and very long walks in uni parks. Movement energizes your brain, it is scientifically proven and you'll find that your brain will still subconsciously be thinking about your degree while doing something else. So once you will be back at your desk, you will just have figured out the answer to that problem quite immediately. So definitely treat this as a priority. Yeah, let's get real about money. University life can very easily drain your wallet faster than a new iPhone release. But here's the good news. Student discounts are literally everywhere. And I mean everywhere. From food to travel to that totally unnecessary but absolutely adorable stationery, always ask if there is a student discount. You can even use websites such as Student Beans or Unidays to get all your discounts in one place and unlock a bunch of uh, online codes. Another pro tip to make sure you don't spend all of your money would be to set up an automatic transfer from your main account to a savings account every month, even if it's something stupidly small like 10 pounds. Over time, these really small consistent savings can add up giving you a financial cushion for unexpected and stressful expenses that we really do not want while also juggling uni life. Speaking truthfully, finding your people in a completely new environment can be really challenging. However, you need to remind yourself that everyone is in the same boat as you are. No one knows anyone and they just might be a bit too shy to start up a conversation. So my best advice from very early on in your uni career would be to sit down next to different people at, at lectures during the first couple of weeks and introduce yourself to the person next to you. They are doing the same subject as you after all, so you'll already have some common subjects. Another great option would be to get to know people from the same accommodation as you. So whenever you see someone new in the kitchen, just spark up a conversation. And of course, use social media. There will be some group chats pre-established for freshers where you can meet tons of people sharing the same interests as you that are literally just a message away. And finally, don't forget to take lots of pictures, literally tons of them and videos and everything. You're going to want to remember these years, trust me, because they're very short and they go by in a blink of an eye. Whether it's the big events or just a random Tuesday afternoon that you spend with your friends, make sure to capture those moments. They're going to be what you look back on when you're old and wise or just slightly older and reminiscing. And on that note, remember to enjoy it all. University is just so much more than academics. It's about growing, it's about making memories and figuring out who you really are. You are not going to remember that one exam that you studied a little bit too little for, but you are definitely going to remember a random conversation that happened in a college bar with your best friend.
So there you have it, everything I wish I knew before starting university. Hope this helps you feel less stressed about university and starting this new chapter in your life. It's going to be amazing, trust me. If you found this helpful and enjoyed it, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more tips and tells from my Oxford life, for more maths content and just my life in general. And hey, if you've got any advice for future students, drop them in the comment below. I would absolutely love to hear it and I'm sure you're gonna help someone out. Make sure to follow me on Instagram if you want more frequent updates from me because I'm always on there and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any of my new videos. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you very, very soon with a new video. So goodbye. I'm sick of daydreaming I just want the feeling of you in my bed I'm down at this waistline, right below your waistline Want you by my head